Very good. Ready to begin? I'll kick us off. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. Um, really ecstatic about the excitement about our recent announcement for Microsoft Viva. And um, if you don't know me, I'm Carson Hetty. I'm the director for the Central Region for our major health providers and payers. And uh, really excited to uh, be part of this session today, uh, specifically as more and more information comes out about Viva. So I know many of you have already been exposed to uh, some level of Viva knowledge, um, specifically some of the components that may fall into your existing investments uh, with Microsoft. So uh, we're joined today by Michael Giannotti, who's one of our principal teams, technical specialists. Uh, really excited to have him. He runs our healthcare blog uh, for Microsoft US Health and Life Sciences, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with him for about a year and a half now. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Michael to uh, talk about our experience, uh, employee experience and cultural uh, tool, Viva. Excellent. Thank you, Carson. Uh, so as he said, uh, just by a quick uh, way of introduction, my name is Mike Giannotti. And I'm a principal technical technical specialist here at Microsoft, uh, covering our healthcare and life sciences group. Um, just as a quick advertisement for us, we do have a blog at aka.ms/hlsblog. That's aka.ms/hlsblog. And after today's presentation, uh, all the slides that you'll see today will be available off of that. I'll have a post as well as the recording from today um, and then other resources available for you. So, you know, please be sure to check that out. We'll have that. Like I said, it'll be up by tomorrow morning and you'll be able to get to those materials. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping items as we go. We're doing kind of a mute all as we go through just to ensure that, um, you know, that we have uh, a semblance of order as we're going through and we'll still hear, hear dings for a while while people are joining. But please, if you have questions as we go through, we're not going to have a lot of time for q and I will tell you that. But having said that, please po feel free to post them here or do hands up. I will take pauses uh, periodically also to take uh, and field questions. And like I said, we've got a lot of material to cover today. Uh, as we talk about Microsoft Viva, which is my favorite area of conversation these days. So um, just a, one last quick little, this isn't a plug for me, it's from our Viva group. If you go to the uh, blog, I'll have that post tomorrow will be up. I'm gonna include a link to this so that you can get to that. But the uh, Microsoft Viva team, is having an AMA or ask me anything on June 23rd. So next week you can ask them any question you have that you didn't get. It's, it's not a presentation. It's just a ask us anything you, you want and uh, they'll answer. So that is available. But without further ado, let's get on with today's presentation. So I have a couple of slides we're gonna cover that kind of set up and help to explain what Microsoft's thoughts are around Viva, where our uh, view is, our direction, and it give you a sense as to not only why we've done what we've done, but where we're going. The first of those is around employees. And that first slide that I kind of raced through said resilience, a lot of this goes really back to the beginning of the pandemic. And when the pandemic began, we saw a large outpouring of uh, workers from their workplace to outside, to working remote. And with that, there's a lot of stressors that came about that we've seen you know, here at Microsoft with our competitors, with our customers, our partners across the board. Even like I work healthcare and life sciences, even with providers who are, you know, typically we think of the clinicians and those folks, there's a whole wealth of staff outside of that realm who begin to work remotely. And we'll talk about that mix as we go through. But uh, uh, as those stressors came about, we started looking at things. We looked at uh, w trying to figure out what's the major thing that keeps employees, one, more productive, even in a work remote view, you know, working remotely. And number two, job retention, because if I can work remotely, I can work anywhere. And we did see some of that with uh, various uh, companies where they saw pressures on their org with people starting to shop themselves. The number one thing that we saw was around engagement. 
when you have engaged employees, they're more productive and they're also more likely to stay where they're at and be retained. And as a part of that, we started looking at and breaking down the six major areas that really Viva, as we get into it, is meant to address. And these are those areas that contribute to that engaged employee experience. Number one is around empowerment. Do I have the tools and things I need at my fingertips to easily get my job done? Or are we making it difficult? Do I got to you know, click from here to here to here to here and have 10 million windows open? Or are we simplifying? Number two is job growth. Do I feel like my employer is investing in my growth professionally through training and opportunities? So I have opportunities both within role to grow and expand, but also possibly to grow and expand and move into other areas within the organization and training. Do I have a sense of purpose that's greater than just me clocking in? You know, many, many moons ago, um, as a uh, dishwasher in high school, um, I had the experience where I would go in during the day and I'd literally punch a clock in with a paper uh, ballot and punch out. And that was my sole purpose. But when we have an organization that we're, we're doing things and we feel we're, we're contributing and a part of something greater than ourselves, um, in that case, am I, am I experiencing that? Do I feel that tie to that larger organization? The next is around focus, and this is huge. Right now, we're in a virtual meeting. You are in a Microsoft Teams meeting. And we know that for many employees, as they moved outside working remotely and from home, that that became problematic in that they'd start earlier. And uh, you know there are days where I would go, especially early on in dealing with some of my customers, where I'd get up, I'd be logged in early, and I may not even get to the shower until noon or later. Uh, and we saw people looking at virtual meetings and saying, hey, if I don't have to worry about bringing them into the room and this and that, rack and stacking meetings. So is the org providing me tools that help me to clear the deck, be able to focus on the things I need to do, as well as organizationally, are they assisting me? Connections is another one. Again, if you're not working in the workplace, if you're not a frontline worker there every day, but we're pushed to a remote, or now you're in a hybrid uh, situation with some on campus or you know at your organization's location and others remotely and scattered, you're not having the water cooler talks. You're not meeting at the coffee pot. You're not going by the cube saying, hey, what's up? And making those connections that are both personal and professional that help with career, with uh, getting your job done as you make connections, and on that personal level, again, being engaged. And the last is around employee well-being, and we're gonna, we'll hit on that at the very end. Is my employer proactively looking after my well-being? And we'll be taking a look at how and uh, what we're doing to address that. So with all of that, we looked at tools that can enable those things. Um, and we recognize that our customers and even ourselves, as well as partners, um, have many tools, some of which come from Microsoft, others from competitors or partners, uh, homegrown apps, et cetera. And there's a whole range of things that could plug into areas that address those six areas. So rather though than saying, look, let's build all new tools, we decided to build what we're calling an experience platform. When we talk about Viva, that's what it is. It is an experience platform bringing together many of the things that we talked about and that you see here into a single experience that simplifies it for employees and brings them to where they're at and where they're working. And we're doing that today primarily through four modules. There'll be more things down the line. We'll be announcing, not today, uh, but Today, we're really looking at and focusing on four key areas that we're going to walk through today. The first of which will be connections, Viva Connections. And that is the module that's really addressing the transmission of corporate culture, of communications, as well as applications 
and we'll get into that in a tailored experience for users based on their role and engaging them. It's not just a one-way push and a here's all our corporate marketing. That's not what it is, and we'll see why. Next, we'll see, we're going to take a look at uh, topics. Topics is all about harnessing the power of knowledge management and ex expertise enterprise-wide and bringing it proactively to the users that you'll see. After that, we'll take, take a look at skilling and growth, which comes under our Viva Learning module. And under Viva Learning, we'll see how, no, we're not replacing your learning management system, but what we are doing is integrating with that for your corporate compliance component, as well as the full continuum of learning from everything from a department or project team that needs to read some documentation, all the way up through divisions, et cetera, to that final, you know, corporate compliance training that takes place and aggregating it and bringing it and serving it to our users. And finally, we'll take a look at insights that is all about providing actionable insights to the individual, to their management, and then finally, organizationally. And we'll take a look at all those areas with that. Like I said, it's a lot to cover. So buckle your uh, seatbelts and we are going to begin. I'll take questions at the end of the first module. <laughs> um, the last point, just to put this to bed right here, everything that I'm gonna show you falls under your existing privacy and security policies and postures that you set up in your organization using 365. As I said, this is about the experience as far as the back end and the things that we're doing to secure that data and information and privacy. It's still all respected. I'll mention that as we go, but that's an important piece. And then the last thing is platform and ecosystem. We just had build. We announced a slew of uh, vendor or partners and people that are going to market today. We also released the APIs. So everything I'm going to show you is meant to be extended, meant to be leveraged. Um, both uh, by yourselves as well as partners and vendors out there. So without further ado, let's jump into cor corporate connections or Viva Connections and talk about that corporate culture and communication. So Viva Connections is all about bringing the next generation intranet based on Microsoft SharePoint Online modern framework. And that's important to keep in mind the modern framework. A lot of my customers have migrated up to the cloud or they're in the process of doing that with their SharePoint, but it's still in what we call classic mode. So this is not your daddy's, your grandpa's SharePoint. This is modern framework. It's meant to be responsive design. It is. It does all kinds of things that lend themselves to connections as well as we have pieces coming down the pike with connections as a part of that, but it brings this next generation intranet, highly tailored for people based on their role within an organization. So different people may have very different experiences and brought to them where they work, which is that single pane of glass that you may have noticed. Well, let's just quickly go back to this slide with all the Viva experiences. While we can get to many of them, via browsers and going places, we're bringing it right within Teams where you're at right now. And again, that single pane of glass to get work done. So we're bringing the full fidelity of the modern intranet, next generation intranet, where you're tailoring, tailoring experiences right within Teams, but not just Teams on the desktop, the browser, Mac, PC, as well as mobile. So, you know, here I am, my iPhone, I have it. I can't show you our internal stuff on a public call, uh, but I'm on it, right? And I'm getting it right here. So we're going to take a look at what this looks like, kind of walk through, and then I have a demo environment where I can show some uh, extensions and living, breathing pieces of this. But at a quick highlight, this is what it looks like for a user. Instead of them going in the morning to start their day and having to go out to a company intranet, which most people won't do. They have work to get done. As soon as Teams fires up, 
the first thing that's going to greet them is their company intranet. So here we're seeing this branded experience for this Rella Cloud company. It is a full fidelity experience. So all the navigational elements come over. I'll show you the interactive pieces as well, how that's working. Um, we're getting all of that within here. We're also getting things like personalization via audience profile targeting. So today, there are two pieces that are coming this summer in this view, the an updated company feed that you can use in lieu of or as a replacement to your news. Um, but today, the news piece that's there, you can do audience profiling, you can do roll-ups of news. So there's a wealth of things around that. Um, that blog I mentioned, that's my next post on extending this. So you can do this today, but with this company feed, we're giving additional information all around this. The next piece is here in this dashboard. And the dashboard is a tile-based view of applications that people need to get their job done. The beauty of it is not only can we tailor news, events, and information that we're bringing to people, but we also can tailor the applications that we're going to integrate and provide here. So again, I may have a knowledge worker, I may have a frontline worker, and they may have very different views. And here we can see some examples of tiles, which can be different sizes, with images, without, different types of interaction. But I have here one that's what we call a no code, where I'm seeing all of my tasks across Outlook, across Planner, across Microsoft to do, and I'm seeing how many I have due. So one, one tile that with no code, we drop it on the dashboard and everybody sees it, but they see their tasks. Here I see a tile for what we call a low code. So we have no code for our different services in the cloud and some of our partners uh, that we've announced. And I have a slide at the end that'll show you many of those. Uh, that you're probably using today um, have no code once you can just drop in but here's an example of a low code using nothing more than the power platform or microsoft power apps creating an application with workflow for somebody to have a return to work at building access by doing a covid check and it walks through some steps and you can click and get a little pop up and walk through fill out the information to be provided building access. Then we're seeing some additional ones here, but we said that, you know, the beauty of it is here I am, I'm in Teams. I didn't have to go anywhere. We brought it to you, but what about mobile? Well, when I go to my mobile view in Microsoft Teams, and here we are in the Teams client on a iPhone, I think in this case, we're getting the same branded experience. Now we're looking at the feed with all that targeted information for me, brought with full fidelity and with full engagement and interaction. So when I click and we start to scroll through this, we'll see here things like, you know, like, comment, there was a share. We're seeing other pieces where we've even brought in Teams meeting. We can bring in all kinds of content in the new feed that's coming out. Um, and again, you know, it provides then full fidelity and full interactivity, right? So even here in this Teams conversation that's been, been made available, we can do things like take pictures, record audio, all the things that I would expect. And when we go through and we look at all the information that's feeding up, we'll see again that fidelity of experience. Nothing that the organization has to do or set up just by virtue of having Viva Connections set up and running and having the feed, it recognizes it. Microsoft Teams brings it in, lays it out cleanly as it should, and presents it right through the client, not something separate that people have to go to. Uh, then as we go to the dashboard, so here is that dashboard on the desktop, and here we see it in the mobile view for this woman who is a knowledge worker. She's seeing you know, some of those that we mentioned, including integration into their time off system to their uh, could be Kronos, could be whatever. Um, here we have direct 
integration into Yammer and at a leadership. So there's a Yammer community. And again, full interactivity. I don't have to go to Yammer. I just simply click ask, type my question, and then I can receive an answer from that community. So we're getting all of that. We're seeing additional ones, no code, drop-ins from other Viva modules that we'll be seeing in a bit. For example, from Insights, we're seeing here it recognizes, hey, this woman, she's been running like a hamster on a wheel. She needs to take a break. Interjecting to go ahead and, and step back and kind of do some breathing exercises. Um, we also see here a mandated learning module that's being presented. And both of these you'll note are different sizes. Again, you can tailor the uh, tiles for different size, different layouts for uh, here we have some imagery, but here it's pulling in a mandated learning module that it recognizes she needs to do. And if we go through, we'll see additional information that's there. Uh, but then when we come over here, now we're seeing a different individual. And in his case, he is a frontline worker. His view looks very different, right? Same exact dashboard, but we audience profile the tiles so, and we can profile them based on Azure Active Directory groups or 365 groups. And when we do, he's now seeing, for example, shifts because he is shift driven. So he's going to clock in with Kronos or with Microsoft shifts. He's going to take, he doesn't have to do the uh, COVID checker to get back to building access. He's never left. He's been there every day, but he has a daily health check that he has to answer some questions. He's seeing things around his pay, around stock, some communications. And so all of that is brought front and center to him. Again, right within that mobile view, doesn't have to go anywhere and getting all of that there. So I'm gonna pause. I saw one question was posted. Um, Carson, do you wanna read what we've got? Yeah, definitely can. Great question here and uh... I think you'll like the answer. So is it fair to say Viva is meant to be an intranet site replacement? And certainly there are some components that can speak to intranet. Uh, there's a lot of projects that we're having uh, specific to intranet replacement that may incorporate Viva, uh, but it can be so much more. So Michael, do you want to field that? Yeah, so uh, definitely. So number one, yes, it can, be, it can be your replacement for an intranet, but also it really depends on where you're at in your 365 journey. Um, if you're already on SharePoint Modern Framework, it could be the extension and now the added capability of bringing it into Teams with full fidelity, like I'm going to show, with bringing uh, you know things like the dashboard and other components. So it becomes much more. It becomes that single place I go to get information, the applications I need, and to really start my day, again, brought within Teams. Although I could go to a web page, right? Because it is based on uh, SharePoint Online. But if you're in uh, the older SharePoint or if you haven't moved to the cloud yet, it becomes one of those things where, yes, it can be the replacement for the home of your internet. It doesn't have to replace everything else, right? We're, we're, there's typically a continuum and a migration and a, a phased approach to bringing things into modern. Um, but certainly, yes, it can be. And the beauty of it is, and I'm not going to really hit on licensing today, but I will say this about connections. If you own SharePoint Online, if you own Microsoft Teams, you own this. And it's a matter of enabling. I've got a blog post with four little videos literally walking you through in real time, step by step. Who owns the data? The data is your data. So you said you're a healthcare and data I mean, we are fully HIPAA compliant. We're fully, uh, I'm not going to go through all the certifications. Um, that's all I deal with is healthcare and life sciences. So Microsoft is fully certified. The data is your data. It's not ours. It's your data. It's in your tenant and all the controls are there for you to secure that data. Um, we don't look at your data. That That's not, uh, that's all in the SLA. Um, that's a whole separate conversation. But real quickly, I do want to quickly show an example of this. So here I've set up using, if you go to lookbook.microsoft.com, if you haven't been there, you should be, especially if you're looking at modern intranet, 
This is a template, a solutions template for a modern corporate intranet. And here you can see things like this global app navigation where I can see my sites, sites that I'm following. I can see things like the news I'm following, my files, all that's there. But when I set it up into connections, now it's available here, full fidelity. I'm getting this mega menu where within that I can audience profile target links. So based on your role, you may see some links, you might not see others. This icon that indicates we're on the landing, it's interactive. That global nav that you saw on the just a screen, you know, regular uh, browser view, it's all that content's brought front and center to me right here as well. It's an interactive uh, icon. And then I can bring things like video and targeted news. And so here you can see we've got news, most of it coming published here, but some of it's rolling up. This particular piece was rolling up from a leadership connection. And again, we're, we can audience profile target. So some people get some news, other people may see additional news items um, that are not their own. And then because it's all SharePoint online modern framework, right from in here, we can do very rich things, not just video delivery. So here's a stream video, but even to the extent that, hey, if we have return to work and we have a mixed metaphor of people, maybe they need, I had a customer yesterday talking about how they were radically changing their workplaces and consolidating so that they were going to have hoteling and other things. And the employees coming back, they don't even know what to expect in those buildings. So here we have an example of taking something like SharePoint Spaces, which is with SharePoint Modern Framework out of the box, nothing separate to purchase. And just with the addition of a little Insta 360, 360 uh, degree camera, we're able to set up an immersive 360 degree view for virtual tours. If I had a headset, which I don't, if I had a VR, I could put it on and be in 3D immersed. Uh, but here I can come in and you can see now I'm entering this uh, zone where I can see fully all around in 360 degrees. I can add explanations through text. I can add file pop-ups. I can add audio pop-ups. I can navigate through an area to provide views of it, even adding, in this case, uh, I've added a video. So we can come in and get an explanation of the area right from there. And you can do these very rich, immersive environments. And I've never left Teams. I brought it front and center for my users. So that is connections. Do we have any quick other last questions before we move on, Carson? Yeah, Michael, there was another chat uh, in the chat and it was, is it possible to post notifications on the front page to an individual team opposed to a view for the entire company? Yeah, so absolutely. So the again, the way that we do it is audience profile targeting. So it's based on either an Azure Active Directory group or a Office 365 group. And a lot of people say, well, we don't have all those. If you have teams, you do. So. You may have there, you will want to do some organizational exercises around those groups and targeting. But having said that, when you set up a team for your group, um, there's an Office 365 group automatically. That's an entity that can be targeted. So, you know, like we have, for example, and Carson and I are in this, um, we're in the HLS, Healthcare and Life Sciences US team. It's a US based team for all the folks that are in healthcare and life sciences. That's a group that can be targeted on the homepage of our corporate intranet, MSW, which is in my teams. When I log in, there it is. So, absolutely, you can target it on those teams. Take it one step further because we have, with all of this in 365, it's all integrated. So, the workflow via Power Automate. You could go ahead and even push things into Teams channels, send off notifications and all kinds of different things um, based on a post. There's that's a wealth of things. We could talk about this all day and maybe we'll do a separate session on just this, but uh, a ton that you can do there. It's all available again. If you have uh, Microsoft 
teams and you have PowerPoint, excuse me, PowerPoint, I just brought it up. If you have if you have Microsoft Teams and SharePoint Online, you own this. It's a matter of enabling. And again, I have a video, a little series on the post, and I'll provide the links to that in this uh, tomorrow. But be sure to check that blog to see information around that. All right, moving on. That's the longest section that we spend is around that one. The next is around what we call Viva Topics. Viva Topics is all about curating and bringing information to people, right? Um, bringing that to them wherever it is in the organization, security trimming, you only see what you have access to, but being able to, based upon uh, the, the content that is out there and exists today, to be able to uh, go through and mine that data, mine the users, because it uses the Microsoft Graph, which underlies all of this, to be able to intelligently create pages called topics pages that out of the box will present suggested users, suggested content, which could be document, web pages, et cetera, um, suggested sites and related topics and have all that that can then be extended um, by your subject matter experts if need be. Uh, but the beauty of it is, while it creates these pages that are navigable, searchable, where you can search for them, um, what it does is it brings them to you front and center. And so here we are, we're looking at a Teams conversation. And so the way that we handle this is through Teams. You can bubble this up. We can bubble them up in Outlook email, as well as even in a SharePoint page today, the office suite down the road, right? But today, here we see this word SOAR is underlined because there is a project going on, a lot of folks publishing content around this project, which means a topics page was automatically generated. When I come here, because they mentioned SOAR, they didn't have to search for it. It intelligently understands, hey, so when I mouse over, I get a pop-up. I get a topics page pop-up that's gonna say, look, here's a at a highlight some of the things in this page, and I can go directly to them. Like I can click on a person there. I can click on a resource directly. I also see alternate names that were added um, by this. And uh, so from here, if you're not seeing it, I saw somebody ask, you might want to exit and rejoin because we did switch and move forward. It's probably hanging on your end. Um, so from here, I can go ahead, though. And then if I want to see the details, I can click view details. It brings, in this case, the page front and center in Teams. And I'm seeing suggested people, files. It even has in here a Yammer group. Q&A around this SOAR project where people can ask questions around the project because it's a large enterprise-wide one. And so again, I don't even have to leave here. I've, I've accessed it in Teams, right? It popped up during our conversation. I've asked it. I can go ahead and click ask a question, type the question, submit that. And then because I've gone ahead and submitted, people can answer that. And here we go. It's gone ahead. It's answered them. I can rate that answer. And I did all that all in line. So it's all about bringing corporate, enterprise-wide knowledge management, bringing it front and center, consolidating that, and then serving it up contextually where people are working and discussing that content. Um, and again, they're going to go through here. Then I can go over to my home page. Um, this is going to provide me a view of content not in line with me discussing, but based upon the people I'm working with, the things assigned to me, and the topics and content that I'm producing or emailing or discussing. It's taking all those signals, and it's going to proactively suggest content to me. Again, security trimmed. I only see what I have access to, but kind of anticipating based upon all the things I'm working at, so I'm not reinventing the wheel, or as I begin something, I may see related content and people popping up here, and then I can go ahead and select that and 
um, access that content from this location. Hey, Fred. I'm fine. I'm just in a seminar right now. All right. Click mute again. I saw somebody unmuted themselves when we started hearing something. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, uh, and finally, I can manage the pages that I'm actually uh, may be assigned. So, for example, I've been assigned content internally at Microsoft. We have topics. It recognizes a lot of content from my blog. It created an HLS blog topic uh, because there's a lot of documentation with that recurring theme, and it recognized it, built the page, and then I was able to extend it, add charts. I have metrics in there. I've got videos on uh, working and using the blog, et cetera. So extended, but here I can come and see a single view to manage that page and pages uh, that may be assigned to me. That's it for topics. Um, topics is also released. So we've released uh, connections is out today. It's in production. You can turn it on and access that. Topics, likewise, is also released uh, for general availability. Uh, there is the, the option to get trial licenses, et cetera, and start to play with that and take a look at it. But any questions around Microsoft Viva Topics? And I don't know if you saw any, was there any questions around that, Carson? Not around topics specifically. There was a question uh, pertinent to policies in Teams being used okay. to either hide or show the Viva site to guest users. To guest users. Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Actually, I'll, I'll just quick address it. You can show uh, based on the app policy. That's where you then light it up for everybody. You can do that globally. You can do it for select. You can do targeted. Uh, policies within your org. Uh, we provide a bunch of out of the box ones, but yes, you can absolutely show or hide that uh, tab for, and you may want to do that to start with anyways, right? You may want to roll it out to a select group of users, give them a preview of it, and then uh, go, but yes, you can through the, the policies because that's where you set it up and we show that in that uh, whole piece of turning on connection. So great question. Moving on, Viva Learning. I love Viva Learning. I'm an ex. My background is actually in degrees elementary education. That's what I have my degree in. I taught eighth grade uh, language arts to students in Southern Cal, mostly migrant ed. And uh, I love. And my first job in IT out of teaching was as an instructional web designer. So Viva Learning is something that's new. Um, it is in preview now. We've just published out, and I'll provide links to those. Uh, we've just gone ahead and published out the ability for you to turn this on in your org to make it available to your users. So you can take a look at that. Uh, but what Viva Learning does is corral the learning continuum of everything from, let's say, a project team that may have documentation people need to review beforehand all the way up to that corporate compliance mandated learning that's being served up through an established learning management system. And we're not replacing that. We're simply bringing that full continuum together in a single location for users to access it, to make it easier for them to see not only what they have or what's recommended, but even what's available within the org. Bringing it in one place, Microsoft Teams. So we're going to take a look at this uh, real quickly and we'll kind of walk through. And here you can see some people, they're getting ready with this project SOAR. We're going to look at two different levels from a departmental or in this case, a project team uh, doing some of that. And then we're going to take a look at the enterprise level. So in this case, they've set up a team for this project where they can add a whole host of people who are going to be involved in this enterprise-wide project. They want to bring learning that's pertinent for this project front and center to the users in their team. We'll take a look at globally in a bit. Um, so here, what they're going to do is the person who's managing this is going to add Viva Learning. 
right within the team as a tab. And they're going to go ahead, give it a name, and they're calling it SOAR Learning. They're then going to find some courses they want to apply as a part of this. And so they're going to do searches, and it's going to display available courses that are there for them. They can select the ones they want. Once they're done, they can go ahead and save that. It's going to set up that tab for them. Here it is, SOAR Learning. And you see in that administrative view for the person managing the team, they're seeing that here with the courses they selected. And again, you can see it's coming from a range of places, right? So here we have something coming, leading innovation that's coming from their corporate LMS system. But we see other ones that are available as well. So in this case, we see something from LinkedIn Learning. So we can integrate not only documentation and your LMS, but even repositories out there on the internet. You can even bring in SharePoint content. We'll talk about that. Or content simply by virtue of a link. So a whole range of content can come from different places. Here's just a PowerPoint. They have to go through and they can click add new and they can start to do that. And here you can see I can continue to go and look for additional content that I may want to take and add add that co those materials there that's going to appear then for my users and then as they're taking those courses you know here you see some of the back end pieces but as they're taking them i can take a look at who's done who's completed it who hasn't we'll see that in a moment this is going then into that back end view this is from somebody who's enabling viva learning for the enterprise and here you see some of the course that they've made available but there's other ones, and these are third party. So in this case, for example, Cornerstone, that's an LMS system. Um, success factors from SAP, those are ones. As we have partners coming online and integrating, providing that integration, then we're able to simply point and click on the back end if you have uh, licensing and availability and select those as well as ones out there on the web that are web-based repositories like edX. Um, here we have a SharePoint site, for example, where we may have set up a library and there's a whole, it has a thing, how to set up a learning catalog in SharePoint. Um, it's very straightforward and simple. You can, add, and you can set that up and then have that available as well. And here we see this is an onboarding catalog. So we can select all this content, make it available. We can assign content. Um, we can recommend content so it'll show up. There's three primary views from an enterprise level. And that's what we're getting into here that people see assigned content, recommended based on a role, and then all that's available. So here I can go through we can start to select people or teams, Active Direct, Azure Active Directory groups. Um, do in this case anytime, it's not assigned, it's just recommended. Put notes in there. And when we're done, it's going to go ahead, create that, make it available. And then once it's available and people start to take it again, I can come through right here within from the Teams area, somebody who set that up, and then I can start to see, you know, who's taking the content. I can check the status, so I can send nasty grams or not, but get an idea around that. We can also do some reporting on that. From a user standpoint, I come in, and here's learning at the enterprise level as a tab on the side. I come in and I see content assigned to me personally. I can see content recommended like we were recommending content and again this is coming from anywhere and then finally i can see you know recently viewed bookmarked there's a whole range of content and then any of the content that's made available to me it can be trending completed here we go we're starting to see modules available from linkedin from microsoft learn but instead of the learning being all over one place to get your work done. And again, it's just showing more repositories, single pane of glass. I can take courses right from within Teams when I fire them off. And then when I'm done, it's finished. Also, 
when I'm in my intranet, if I go and search all those things that we've been putting together, content was not showing on my mobile device, only desktop client. Um, I don't know if you mean content from learning or the content here. Uh, so uh, at any rate, moving on with this, this is showing now coming in the intranet. You can see as they search, they're even seeing those learning modules right within company search, right? So right out of SharePoint, you can see it. You can get them there as you're searching. We'll, we're going to suggest and bubble those things up via search as well. And then because it's all here, you're able to go ahead, Viva Learning, and you can start to search. You can add uh, those and provide them within conversations that you're having. But it's kind of that whole round trip piece. Micro learning and sharing on mobile, that's going to be enabled as well. Again, all of this in learning is in preview today, and it's being phased and rolled out in the preview. Later this summer, uh, it will be enabled. Any questions on learning before I move on to the final module of insights? Is it possible to use L any LMS system? So the short answer is yes. Um, we did open the APIs. We are continuing to open, provide additional APIs. So you will see, uh, number one, additional vendors coming online. There's a whole range of them. We work with EDU a lot. Uh, like, you know, there's, so there's people like Blackboard and all those out there. Um, so number one, with us opening up the APIs now, everybody can begin, not just companies we had worked early on with directly, uh, but they can are now start to take advantage of that to provide that integration. But also there is the uh, capability for you to leverage that as well. I just saw another question come up. Carson, what was that when I saw something? I was in the middle of explaining, so I missed it. You're good. Is there an additional cost to use that module or is it just the cost of the individual LMS systems that they might be using? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I can't get, so they have not announced um, publicly cost models. I will tell you, uh, typically when we're talking about integration to third party, if there is a cost there for a connector or something, then there would be a cost associated with that. Um, and if it's free, to, if they're free connectors to like free repositories or things you're self-hosting, um, then typically there's not, but we have not announced that. So I don't have that information to be able to pass on to you here. Um, all I can say is stay tuned. They're, uh, they're later in this summer, uh, is my knowledge that they'll be releasing. So there's announcements still coming out around the learning piece. The last one I do know the licensing exactly around. So let me go ahead. And let's start into productivity and well being with insights. Insights is all about providing actionable insights into people's behavior and well being. It's really around that. And it's around doing that at a personal level, a management level, and an organizational level. So, with insights, and this is talking about some of the personal ones and then we'll, we'll see some of this in action. It's all about taking data-driven because everything, when you're in a Microsoft 365, you know, when you're in email and you're actively creating emails, actively reading and scrolling through, that's all tracked on the back end. When you're in a meeting like this, that's tracked. How long you're in, are you typing and multitasking? I, I, I got an alert, Was is this an optional meeting? Uh, and it was my manager's meeting because all of us on his team in our weekly meeting while he's talking, what are we doing? Or, which is why we're not on video. Um, and it recognized that and said, hey, is this an actual meeting or is this optional um, for you? And Carson's laughing. I kid you not. It was, and it happened during a meeting, during the meeting. And I, I, I told him and he laughed. Um, but that was expected. So, uh, but everything, all these signals are being tracked in the Microsoft graph as a part of it. And what Insights does on a personal level, it provides you personal insight into your activity. And it gives you actual, actionable recommendations that you can do. 
how to take some time for mindfulness, to take a break, right? How to proactively lock time for you so you're not in the rack and rack and stack them meeting, you know, hamster on a wheel cycle uh, that many people get into. How to stay connected with people you've been conversing and prompting that so that, you know, you've been working with people and maybe now you're moving on, but to reestablish and maintain those connections and, and do that and how to prepare for your day through an email summary in the morning and, and serve that up to you. And so here you can see within Viva Insights, this is at a personal level, they're first showing the stay connected, right? And we're seeing some people here, as well as being able to proactively leverage the power of AI to look for time that you have available and to go ahead and schedule, you know, make it available, not schedule it without you selecting, but being able to, for you to then do nothing more instead of having to go out to your calendar, look for free time, blah, 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 and do have the AI bring it front and center so you can select that which is important to you. Here you can see the select focus time where you can go ahead and it looks for free time and it'll allow you to just go ahead and book it and block it so other people can't grab it. And here's that holistic view for that individual as they come in when they click insights which can be enabled uh, for organizations today you can turn this on for the individuals so they can see this and they can and i have it on mine you can get a couple of things number one you know you get this little good morning it's a new day next we have here send praises to your colleagues which is one of those features i can send praise and then not only do they receive that but then their management is alerted around that. And those become items that are trackable. We can pull later so that they can go ahead as a part of a review process. Hey, these people have called you out in a good way. And, and there we have that. We also have to take a break, taking some time. And we have guided things that you can make available to your users with exercises. How are you feeling today? This is all private. And by the way, I want to be very clear as we get into management and organizational we de-identify the people here so that when we're looking from a management level versus personal i can't see individuals in fact i can't see the my team unless i have at least nine or more members you can ratchet that number higher i have a customer that has a presence in germany they rat wanted it up to 16 and they went ahead and did that but you can't lower below that, and that's for compliance's sake, so that you can see views, but not of individuals. Um, could you repeat when every Viva lot? Yes, I will at the very end. Um, and so here you see some other things, top actions for today, stay connected, protect time, uh, things that are, you know, been assigned on your to-do list. Here you can see I can explore, for example, how I'm feeling over time so I can get a sense of what's going on, build a habit of emotional awareness is one of those things. And, you know, that becomes important for people as they're managing their own time. Here you can see where I'm going to go ahead and send praise and where I want to put that. Is it just directly to them? Am I putting it in the channel and everybody can see uh, that, you know, it's a part of that. And of course, have their management know that they have been praised. And I can even set up reminders. I just did this this morning so that every Friday I have time to remind me to go ahead and do that. Um, and then again, schedule focus time. And I can see it has some recommended times based off of AI. I can go ahead and again, set up reminders for myself but we're bringing it all together in a single place for a user. We're also providing that here within this mobile view. Um, and I'm gonna kinda go quickly and skip past that just because we wanna make sure we get to the rest and get into the management, but all the views that are there for individuals in their mobile client. The next is around management. How is your team doing, right? If, if I have less than nine, then I could certainly go up and have access to the next higher level so that we have an aggregate at the next management level. But here I can see things where, whoops, it's starting. What just happened? 
let me. I don't know why that skipped back. I did something in PowerPoint. So let me go through here and click the squares and go way down back to insights. And we will go here. There we go. Um, and so from here, you can see I'm seeing some things around burnout and employees. And I can start to drill into these. And you can see I can do things around freeing up capacity. But now I'm looking at employee burnout, average after hours, and it does a comparison of mine and other like-sized teams and how much they're doing. Then based off of that, I can go ahead, I can view recommended plans, and I can see best practices. I can even go ahead and select, and we have some preview ones available to help people with unplugging, preserving quiet time. In my own team, my manager recognized in the beginning of the pandemic, we were like hamsters on a wheel because we were serve, you know, helping with all the um, healthcare customers as they were ramping up on virtual healthcare, et cetera. And so he actually scheduled a day a week where we read a book. Uh, oh shoot, where is it? I'm having a mind cramp. Um, Dare, oh, Dare to Lead, that was it. It's up on my bookcase now. We read the whole, we read, we read the book, but we went through chapter at a time together, had discussions, were able to have some deep conversations, but it gave us a chance to step back from the business, breathe, connect with each other, and be more proactive in what we were doing. Um, and you know, get some strategic thinking about how we engaged with each other and with customers. And he, a lot of that was driven off of this workplace analytics data that we're serving up here in Insights. From a organizational standpoint, again, and we, I'll relate an experience with Microsoft that we have here. We can even go higher and look organizationally wide and start to see things around organizational resilience, around effective management and other things that we're tracking. And these can be customized and we can pull feeds from a range of things and make them available. But once we do, the beauty of it is, again, organizationally, those executives, they can start to look at things. We're gonna give them proactive uh, pieces that you can make available for them to be able to uh, start to address areas of concern that they're seeing proactively. They're gonna have all kinds of organizational deep charts. And here you can see some of the reports that are here, as well as the ability to build these reports and do dynamic ones. And at Microsoft, again, from an organizational standpoint, we saw that employees were logging in earlier. And because they were at home, they were not stepping away for breakfast. They were not stepping away for lunch. We were go, 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 go. And so they actually, as a part of that organizationally and in the insights they were gaining through all this, were able to then say, look, we understand that you're under tremendous stress. We understand our employees across the board having all kinds of stressors and working longer hours. And they gave us five additional mental health days to take. And we, our manager for this calendar year and our managers continue to remind us, mine just reminded us in our one-on-one, -on -one, uh, excuse me, in our team meeting on Monday, uh, make sure you're taking those days on top of your vacation days. But it's the idea that the organization understands my needs, my workflows, and across the organization, and again, can based off of that start to take action. And here, they're just showing some of the setups around this. We also have just released something called an R package toolkit that has a repository of more than 100 functions. So you can go through and create all kinds of visualizations and output reports. Um, but the tool is available for that. We're not going to go through it because of time. Um, it will start to end here, but we're just going to keep moving and keep moving on because we have a couple, three last things I want to highlight before we conclude. Viva prerequisites from a connection standpoint. You need to have SharePoint modern framework. You want to turn on the app bar and global navigation on that. Again, I have a four uh, video set that walks you through step by step doing all of this. 
Um, and if you don't do that, you'll see that you do lose features. Insights. You have to, you really need to have it a bare minimum, your mailbox is turned on in Exchange Online. We're leveraging the graph, which is calling all this information from Exchange, SharePoint, Teams, Yammer, all this stuff, these signals, you want them populating and lighting up, but at a bare minimum, you need to have that Exchange Online. From a topics piece, um, your core sites that you want to get information from, they, they need to be turned on and we need to have con content hosted in there. Again, we'll go through um, and, and do that. There's more information I'll provide you, but if you want to have that and want the underlining, you need to have that uh, information available. And finally, for learning, uh, you need to turn that on. There is a process. I'll provide the links around that. As far as ecosystem, this is at a quick highlight because I know I'm hitting I'm actually two minutes over. From a, a timeline prospect, that question was asked directly. Topics is out. Uh, connections is out and available, the desktop version. Uh, the mobile is coming out in the summer. Um, we are We are in preview of public preview for insights as well as for uh, learning. And over the course of this summer, insights will go general availability for everybody. So will learning um, connections, the mobile and the dashboard within that and that new feed. Those are all being released over this summer. And then finally, topics V2 uh, is coming. So this is the timeline. Again, I'll provide these slides uh, in my piece. But what's next? You know, talk to your account teams, get a presentation, participate in it. We have briefing sessions through our MTCs. Um, I do them all the time for my customers where we dive into all of it or, you know, much longer for all of it than an hour, as well as individual components. Um, check out the blog at aka.ms slash HLS blog, aka.ms slash HLS blog. We've been posting there. Tune in next week to the AMA. I'll provide a link in the post that has this recording. But that's it from my perspective. And on my end, I can stay for another uh, couple of moments. If there are any last questions, you know, please uh, feel free to shoot those. Yeah, Michael, thank you so much for this. Obviously, a lot of great questions in the chat. Um, as I posted in the chat, there will be some opportunity for uh, getting the recording. So if you'd like to get a copy of that, feel free to reach out to me or to your account team. We'll make sure yeah. you get a copy of that. Uh, furthermore, if you want to continue the discussion, um, Michael did a great job of articulating some of the ways that we can do that through briefings uh, with our technology center, with some of our technical specialists. So uh, definitely reach out if there's opportunity to continue the dialogue. And thank you for the vibrant interest today. Yeah, and I, was there any last, uh, some great questions in the chat, if you're interested, continue. Oh yeah, with topics, um, yes, on licensed users. Um, yeah, we have organizations. I do have organizations that have rolled this out uh, for a subset. So I had one that just bought their 100,000 plus users and they bought 5,000 uh, licenses of topics. So yes to that. Can you put a link to the recording in this conversation? After the fact, once it's loaded up and uploaded, sure. Yes, because I'm going to upload that. We'll put it into YouTube so that I'm not sharing it from my OneDrive. So we'll have that and it will be embedded in a post though. I'll put the post link because that'll have all the resources as well uh, in there. So great question there. Um, recording, yes, there will be a recording. Is this recorded? Yes, it is. Are there metric data reporting on the percentage of target audience who actually viewed notices? I'm gonna assume you mean a post uh, for news posts and so if you're posting, yes, we have analytics around all that. Whole separate topic, but yes. Um, to see Teams, Insights is a requirement. Insights, oh, for both Viva Insight. You get it through the licensing. That's a great question. My Insights and Workplace Analytics, that's how the licensing comes. It's not, we're not doing a separate one on top of that. 
Um, skill sets for Viva admin. There's four modules. There's four different sets of skills that are addressed. Um, so Viva is a broad umbrella for experience platform. Each of those is handled differently. And could you please repeat when every Viva module will be available? I already did that. I think that's it. I think we're caught up, Carson. So feel free on the post. I'll post the link in here. Uh, once that's live, feel free to ask questions there. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and ping me. Um, if you try to email me, I, email is where messaging goes to die. So good luck getting a hold of me. I get four, five hundred and sometimes more in a day. I've taken a Zen approach. I let it wash over me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll, this conversation is ongoing. So you can go ahead, post stuff here. And then finally, again, I'll do we'll handle that there. And if you have requests for particular pieces around Viva, we're doing an ongoing series at I'll put the link right here. HTTPS whack whack aka dot ms slash HLS B L O G. Now you have no excuse. There we go. Um, the HLS blog. There it is, my little post. Uh, if you go there, we continue to do posts around Viva. I have a whole thing on how to set up video, how to set up spaces with that virtual tours, all that kind of stuff. And we're doing many more. Next one is on audience profile targeting, which you may want to see. So. With that, I'm going to shut up. We're going to close this out. Thank you for coming. Um, really appreciate it. I love this topic uh, and I'm passionate about it. But talk to your account team so they can help you. Very that good. That is Mike and Carson bidding you have a great day. Thank you so much, all. Take care.